Good morning, church. My name is Brett Thumb, and I am your announcements man, coming to you from outside my house where it is a little windy. And so if my hair starts to go a little crazy, please don't pay any attention to that. No, I'm just kidding, everybody. Uh, but for those of you who don't know me, I am actually the youth director at Concord, and I would just love to say welcome and thank you so much for joining us for our Concord Church online service. I do actually have some announcements for everybody, though. So without further ado, here they are. First, if anybody in our community has any physical need, whether that's financial or um, even any food or anything along those lines, uh, please contact our church office. We would love to help out. Next, please be on the lookout for any important updates uh, involving Concord. And there are a few ways that you can actually be on the lookout for those. First, we have a texting service. So if you text Concord15010 to the number 84576, you will be added to that texting service. And we only text out important updates or anything like that, so we won't be spamming your phone or anything along those lines. Next, if you follow our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Concord UMC, we only post important announcements on there as well or different things going on that our pastors are doing. Um, anything along those lines, it's a good way to stay up to date on everything Concord. And lastly, if you go to our website, which is celebrateconcord.com, uh, you can learn all about us, what we believe in, who we are, uh, and we also import, er, post por important announcements on the website as well. Uh, so those are all great ways that you can stay up to date, and like I said, please be on the lookout because there are going to be some things coming up. All right, so that's all the announcements I have for everybody, so if you please bow your heads with me for a moment of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day, God, this beautiful day that you have, that you've given us, God. Um, and even though the weather um, has been going back and forth, God, we, we know that your faith does not go back and forth, Lord. Your faith is steady, um, and so is your love and your mercy for us, God. And we just thank you for that. Um, and Lord, in this time where we still might be a little confused and we don't really know what to do, um, God, or as we're just uh, trying to adjust to our new lives, Lord, we, we thank you for your faithfulness and how steady you really are. God, we pray for everybody who's been affected by, by COVID, whether that's in our community, God, or just around the globe. Um, and we pray for safety and for health um, for everybody who has been affected. Um, and for those who haven't been affected too, Lord, we pray that they stay safe and they stay healthy. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, so if you please join me for a time of worship now. Thanks. God, as we worship you this morning, we do so in the knowledge that even though we are separated by distance, you are here with us. We do so in the knowledge that you are good and that you have promised good to your people. So God, as we lift our voices together, We give you thanks that you are here with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Voices, we are an ocean of your praise, gathered under one name. We are a tide that's rising, and we cannot be contained. Gathered under one name, sea of voices we are an ocean of your praise gathered under one name we are a tide that's rising and we cannot be contained gathered under one
sin was slain Gathered under one name And every chain is broken And every sorrow swept away
criminals cross Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost But then Jesus rose with our freedom in man That's when death was arrested You unravel me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fears are gone And I'm no longer I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb have chosen me, love has called my name, and I've been born again into your family, your blood runs through my veins. i 
Now uh, we come to that point in our service where we celebrate our faith with an affirmation of faith. And so uh, I invite you to say this along with me. We believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God. We believe that He is the Christ, the Son of God who was to come into the world. We believe that He is in the Father and that the Father is in Him. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing we have life in his name. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's, uh, let's continue our worship together today by praying with one another. Gracious God, we give you thanks uh, for this opportunity to gather together today. Thank you, dear God, for the sunshine. Thank you for the birds. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to enjoy and celebrate what you have created for us. Lord, bless us with patience. Help us as we wait. Protect us as we shelter. Lord, we pray for a boldness of our faith and a, an emboldening of our faith that as we find ourselves sheltering in place, that we would be sheltering under your arms. Lord, remind us whose we are and what we are for. Lord, we ask your forgiveness for those times when our patience has uh, gotten short, our tempers have flared. Forgive us, dear God. Help us to treat those we love with patience and care. Lord, help us to treat those we don't know with patience and care. Lord, we pray uh, for our medical personnel, those who are on the front lines of uh, 
uh, protecting us from COVID-19. We pray for doctors and nurses. We pray for delivery people. We pray for grocery workers. Lord, we pray for everybody who might be in contact with someone else who continues to work, Lord. Lord, we pray against fear because, Lord, your word says that your perfect love casts out fear. It chases away fear. And so, Lord, as we find ourselves becoming nervous or undone, oh, Jesus, help us to cling tightly to you. Remind us that we serve one who conquered the grave. Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. And now as we continue with our prayer today, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Good morning. I'm Pastor John Phipps, Senior Pastor at Concord, along with uh, Chris Kendall, our associate. And again, we thank uh, Brett Thumb and Kurt Scott for their help and our, our ability to do this. And happy Mother's Day. Uh, I come outside here to uh, the playground where... You can see behind me at where many of you as mothers bring your children to come and, and to enjoy some time together. And one of the things I miss in the midst of all of this is uh, that I'd sit in my office and I would like as preschool would come in just to enjoy watching the mothers and the dads as, as they would bring the kids in for, for preschool and a chance to get to know and meet some of you that uh, aren't part of Concord. So happy Mother's Day to all of you. I'd like to share with you a passage from uh, the book of Philippians as we've been there the last couple of weeks, and this is in chapter 3. <clears throat> Beginning with verse 1, it says, Finally, brothers, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh, for we are circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to law a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have lost or dissolved the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if anything, you think otherwise, if any of you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join me in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in the shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Paul writes this, and he starts off, and he says, you know, watch out for the dogs. Beware of the dogs. 
And, and I like dogs, as you've seen some of my, my posts uh, of the dogs that we have. And, and I've usually been able to make friends with most any dog that, that I've met. But I remember once I was hunting with a friend from another church. We were out hunting, and he wanted to stop by and visit a friend of his. And uh, he told me when we pulled in, he said, Now watch out for their, his dog, because his dog's pretty mean. Well, as we got out of the car and as we started towards the house, and it was quite a little white walk from the driveway to the house, this dog, large dog, came out growling and snarling and stopped and was in a ready to pounce and attack position, and we both froze. And I thought for sure one of us was going to be attacked and mauled, and I noticed my friend had his hunting knife already out and up his arm, and I'm trying to figure out how do I get to a knife but thankfully the owner finally was able to get the dog called back. But that dog personally, uh, it was an evil dog and it had attacked others in, in the past. So Paul's writing to watch out for the dogs and who he's speaking of when he says, beware the dogs, he's speaking to those who are demanding that the Gentiles become circumcised and live according to Jewish law. Those who would come to Christ, now they had to be, they wanted them to, to live according to Jewish law rather than by faith. And Paul states that we worship in spirit and we take no confidence in the flesh. That, you know, sometimes we take so much confidence in what we can do and how we can do it and how good we are or, or what we have accomplished and what are, what are our different uh, skills and, and abilities and we take a lot of confidence in that. Paul says take no confidence in any of that. Our confidence is in the spirit. Sometimes we take so much pride in what we do that that uh, that becomes our focus. And that was some of the, the, the warning Paul was saying that they were taking pride in following just like Pharisees following the lost but missing the true spirit of the gospel. Paul says that if anyone has confidence, he has more. He has a greater ability to uh, to proclaim how good he is. He, he said, you know, he was born a Pharisee of Pharisees. He, he uh, was circumcised according to the law on the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. He he, he wasn't a, a proselyte as a Gentile. He was, he was a true Jew, and fought, his family followed the law. He, he was circumcised on the eighth day. He was trained and educated according to, to the highest education standards. He was zealous for following, and, and even to the point of persecuting the church. Now, all those glorious things that he could say about look at my accomplishments he would write on his resume if he had a resume he says i count those as loss yet he goes on to actually use the greek word where he says i count them as dog dung dung i count them the greek word refers is made up from from that of dog and, and waste dog cast off he counts it everything he had all those glorious things he could write on his resume he says, I count those as great loss compared to knowing Jesus. Compared to knowing Jesus, all the accomplishments that he had had, he considers those as, as nothing to, to be uh, bragging about. Sometimes some of us, uh, you know, we don't feel like we have a great resume when it comes to being able to proclaim who and what we are. And honestly, none of us do. Some of us feel that we're not good enough, but yet God loves us. Now, when you think about, you know, on Mother's Day, you think about what it is, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, and even though moms want us to, to uh, be, um, do well and to succeed, and, and, and it, even if we fail, our mothers love us, God even more so. Paul saying that you can never do in the flesh, never do on your own power anything. You can never accomplish enough. It's all done. Let you know Jesus. It's about knowing Jesus personally as your Lord, as your Savior. That's what it really comes down to. You can't be righteous on your own. You can't ever be as wonderful as somebody else might want you to be, but God loves you anyway, just like your mother will, a good mother will continue to love you anyway. 
I had a conversation uh, this past week with some of the pastors in uh, Romania. And Pastor Gradish and Sibiu in his new home, having been recently married this past year, and where their home is, uh, he can overlook the city of Sibiu. And he said he was praying over the city of Sibiu. And he realized this is the first time he's ever really been able to clearly see uh, the mountains in the background. Because with the shutdown, all the smog and, and, and everything within the city from the traffic and all of the industry, all that is cleared out and now he can see clearly out and see into to the, the mountainous regions. So he, he challenged us and I think Paul's saying this here is so many times we have smog in our life. Things that keep us from being able to see and to know Jesus clearly and perfectly. We need to let the smog be cleared out. And some of the smog that fills our lives is thinking that I have to do more to, to be found worthy. I have to accomplish so much. I have to be so good. I, or the feelings of the smog sometimes is feelings of things that keep us from feeling like we can ever be, be good enough. And Paul's saying none of that matters. None of that is important. All of that is rubbish compared to just knowing Jesus. Just knowing Jesus. We have smog in our life. It's things that I, I have it as well as everyone else. We have things in our lives that we think will help us be more accepted or we have things in our lives that we feel others won't accept us. We need to let those things go. Let, the, let them clear out so that we might give glory and honor to Jesus Christ just in knowing him. Paul says, he says, I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. And he says, I'm not saying that I've obtained perfection. He said, but I, I'm letting what's behind me be gone. And I'm pressing forward to what the future will be of knowing Jesus better, knowing him in a more clear uh, and, and perfect way. I push on to know and to see Jesus because it's only through Jesus that we are transformed. Nothing by the works of our flesh, nothing by I can do with my hands, nothing I can accomplish in my life. It's only by knowing Jesus. So I invite you to take some time and, and reflect upon your life. What things are there that you are, are kind of making for laws and and, and rules that oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, rather than what lets you know who Jesus is. Let those things be gone and move from you, that you might honor and seek him. Let's pray together and let's take a moment and remember our mothers on this day, the, the beauty that they bring into our lives. Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you that it's not about what we do, but it's about what you have done in us. It's not about who and what we, we might be because of what we do, but it's about who you are in us, that the Spirit of God at work in us, Lord, enlighten our lives that we might see you and know you better. We thank you. In Jesus' name.
Now we come to that time of our service uh, where we have the opportunity to worship as we collect our tithes and offering and we aren't able to do that physically and so we ask that as you are able you would mail those in to Concord at 285 Concord Church Road Beaver Falls PA 15010 or you can uh, give online on our website uh, thank you so much for the generosity that you have been showing throughout this time. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate it, and, and I believe our community is going to be blessed because of it. As we come to our close and uh, contemplate Paul's challenge to us, you know, for me today has been a day of with distractions, a day when when as I start things, different things seem to just interrupt or, or in, in get in the way or seem to change exactly what you want. Maybe you've even noticed some uh, during this, the, the wind blowing through, just, just that something we think about as we're trying to record. Life is full of different things to distract us. Things that uh, get in our way of seeing who Jesus really is. And I moved out here by the slide where some of you bring your, your children and some of you stand at the bottom and you, you're coaxing them to come. But, but what maybe distracts them is the fear of, of something uncertain and they hold on and they just try to slide down, but, but they try not to, to take it. But once they've experienced the, the, the freedom of re, being released into the Spirit of God, they want it again and again and again. And God is like you as mother, standing at the bottom saying, please come on, let go and let the Spirit of God flow through you that you might enjoy who I am. We all have distractions. Some of that's guilt. Some of that's shame. Some of that is, is uh, striving for perfectionism. Some of it is, is insecurity. Some of it is uh, just feeling unworthy. None of that matters beyond knowing Jesus and releasing yourself into his spirit. So as you celebrate the mothers in your midst, realize that God also wants you to celebrate freedom and love in him. May, may you flow to the arms of God just like you run to the arms of your mother. And may you be blessed and may you have a wonderful day.